Hey love, what's up? Welcome to Confidently Uncomfortable. I'm your host, Jago, health and lifestyle coach and not so regal confidence queen. Coming at you with the real, the raw, and of course, the uncomfortable. My mission is to show you that to be confident, it has absolutely nothing to do with being perfect or having it all together and everything to do with you getting uncomfortable and pushing your limits. Thanks for joining me. Let's dive in. Okay, so if you're like I used to be and you're a recovering people pleaser who always is putting your own needs on the back burner, you are going to want to listen to this episode. You're probably going to want to pull over and take some notes as well because setting boundaries is going to be one of the most crucial things when you're trying to just continue to be your best self. And it's something I had to learn on my own with a lot of trial and error. So we're going to dive in and talk about how to set boundaries, what that looks like for you and your life. um, And then also what to do when people don't respect those boundaries. Because here's the thing, you might set some rules and other people just might not abide by those. So we'll dive into that. I'll give you some personal experiences on my life, how I've done it, how I continue to do it and why it's so important for your life as well. So I want to dive right in and talk a little bit about me. So you already know this most likely, but for so long I struggled with being such a people pleaser and I struggled to set boundaries. I wanted to keep everyone else happy, even at the expense of my own mental and physical health. Like I was the yes man. I would do anything and everything. I was spreading myself thin. I was waking up at crazy hours, working long hours, helping out everyone and and. You know, very quickly when you start to burn at both ends, you end up getting burned out. And what your needs, the things that you know you need for your life, those get really put on the back burner quick. And then somehow it's like time goes by so quickly and months down the road, years down the road, you're like, what happened? Where did I go? So I'm talking about like, it's so easy to lose yourself in that whole process of not having boundaries. And so... I'm going to talk about that today and really how to set them and protect yourself and why that's important. So in reality, something I had to remind myself and still do is people pleasing isn't helping anyone. So if you're someone who is constantly saying yes to other people, like the truth of the matter is if you do that so much, you're not going to be able to give a hundred and 100% to that person anyways, because you'll be spread so thin that being able to pour into that person's life as well is going to be really, really difficult. So you're not even going to be helping them or you might even be enabling them to do some things on their own. So reminding yourself that people pleasing isn't helping anyone really helped me take the first step towards owning my own needs and, and being able to say no, because I know that can be hard. Okay, so as far as setting boundaries, some people are like, okay, what does that look like? How do I start? And the first thing I want you to do is figure out what boundaries you need. So ask yourself, what does my highest self need to thrive? So what I mean by that is you think about like what your goals are and what your needs are, your self-care, just certain how you get the most energy. It might be staying at home some, it might be socializing some, it might be a combination, but ask yourself, what does my highest self need to thrive? And by asking yourself that question, maybe you haven't done that before. It gives you the space to just take a step away from everyone else's needs and figure out, okay, this is what I need. This is what I want. And I don't think we do that enough because we are just go, go, go all the time to where we can really get caught up in what other people want for our own lives. And you can do that for a while, but eventually you're going to look back and be like, this is not my life because guess what? You didn't create it. You allowed other people to create it for you. And that's some tough love right there, but it's the truth because it sucks. I've been there and I don't want you to have to deal with that anymore. And the other thing, when you're asking yourself that question about what you need to thrive, I'm not just asking you about what you need to survive. So it's not just a bare minimum, like, okay, well, I need, I, I could do with like a little bit more sleep and maybe like having like one day of me time, maybe. And I don't know, that is not going to be productive because you're just half-assing figuring out what it is you need. So don't just think about the bare minimum. I want you to know like what it is you need to thrive. Um, The second thing with setting boundaries that's super important is setting non-negotiable boundaries. So what space you need to give yourself to be your best self. So the thing about this that's important is 
you can have these idealistic, I like, I would love to get a massage every week or go on a vacation every month. And that might not always happen. Now, I do think you can plan for those things. I think that there's ways around it. It doesn't always have to cost money to show yourself love and, and take care of yourself. But it is important to set some non-negotiables that no matter what, you will put those needs first. And by setting those non-negotiables, you're going to do better and work, have better relationships, and just create an all, altogether better environment for you. And a couple of those non-negotiable boundaries could be that you know that you um, don't want to go out like every single night. Like maybe you need to say no to some friends once in a while. That can be a boundary with yourself that you know just because of how your energy is. So if you do better having a night in, like make the time for that. Same thing with work. Um, setting boundaries with work can be hard because I know sometimes you're having to answer to a boss and I get that. But you'll be surprised how people will actually start to respect you at work more when you are setting those boundaries. So whether it's not doing emails late at night. And so a loophole for this one that I really want you to recommend, just a little quick tip. If you are working on emails at night for work, go ahead and schedule them to be sent in like the next morning at eight o'clock or something. That way it doesn't come off that like you allow work to be answered at night. So you can work on it if you really want to. Now, do I want you to do this all the time? No, but still have the boundaries of when your work hours are just so that the the expectation is there and, and not in the sense of you working late at night for your job. The same thing with if you are trying to get to the gym at night. So setting the boundary of it being an appointment and like, hey, I got to go. I've even had some clients in the past when I was a trainer um, in person where they would literally like tell their people that they have a standing appointment at this time this like every single day. And so when people saw it as an appointment, they respected a little more that can be the first little baby step towards really just saying what you want. But if you need to do that at work, highly recommend it with setting boundaries. The other thing that's huge with like figuring out what boundaries you need is learning to say yes when you want it to be a yes and not just when you feel like you have to appease other people. And the first step of that is actually saying no more. So in order for your yes to be stronger, you've got to learn to say no. You've got to learn to say no when you know it is not going to serve you and when you also know that you just don't have the energy to fully pour into that person or that task that they're asking of you. Even just setting the boundary of like saying no and then saying why, you don't have to justify it, but sometimes that does help you at first with justifying things. So again, like setting these boundaries, the reason I'm such a huge, God, I could just talk about this all the time, but the reason I think it's so important is because your boundaries really help set a standard to what you need and then it's also going to make other people respect you more Um, you're going to end up being better at work you're going to have better relationships friendships and then your environment is just going to feel a lot more controlled because you're actually taking control and the thing to remember is you are in control even when you think you're not you actually are you still have a choice sometimes we get pinned down into this mindset of thinking that you don't have a choice because of your job or your boss or your family but the truth is you do have a choice now the consequences of that choice are the actions of the other people that's theirs but you need to remind yourself that you're not in charge of their feelings and their actions. Like you're in charge of your own, but give yourself that credit. Like you do have control of those decisions. So take back that control in some form or fashion. Um, You can start small, but I definitely recommend saying no more. So your homework is going to be saying no to someone or something that you know is not serving you. And that's going to be your first step. And it might feel awkward and weird, but do it. And then realize like, oh, the world didn't end when I said no to someone. And I actually feel really good right now. That is going to help further like solidify the fact that you're like, oh, I do need boundaries. This is great. And you're going to be living your best life before you know it. All right. So here's the hard part. You want to figure out your boundaries. That's great. But like one of the hardest things is implementation. This is where it can get really sticky because we set these boundaries and we might say like, okay, I'm going to make sure that I leave work by this time or that I don't say yes to everyone before I take a second to figure it out what I need first or whatever that is for you. Implementation is going to be a huge part of it. So practicing saying no without guilt. And that's what I said your homework was going to be. So really just practicing saying no without that guilt. 
and saying no without having the need or feeling the need to justify that no. You don't owe anyone a justification for why you are not able to or do not want to do something or be there in a certain way. Um, You absolutely have a right to just say no. And saying yes with confidence. So like I said, when you start to say no more, your yes is going to become more powerful because the people realize that that yes means something because you're not just saying yes to anything or any everyone, which is huge because you're going to be able to, to be so much more powerful when you do say yes to say some, to something or someone and show up so much more for that yes than you would if you just constantly said yes to everyone and everything. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Let me know for sure. If you are liking this so far, screenshot it and share it and tag me Jago Fit Life because I'm really interested in your thoughts on boundaries. We're not done yet, so don't worry. So like I was saying, the implementation is the hardest part. I struggled with this for so long. I really felt like I couldn't say you no know, because I was going to let people down. I felt like I wanted to be the dependable one. I wanted to be the one that people reached out when they needed help or then when they wanted to talk to someone or vent or whatever that is. But I started to realize that like that really seeped into my own mental health and my own just needs and boundaries. So that's when I decided like I needed to start saying no and I needed to start doing it without feeling the need to justify it. And that can be hard. But if you are able to communicate like your needs that you truly need that space or you need that time away or you need that quiet or you need that like line of like, hey, this is like what we don't talk about because I love you and I care about you and I want to continue to do so. And if we talk about this topic, I'm going to really struggle with that. And sometimes that's family. We're getting holidays coming up soon. And sometimes you need to set that loving boundary for them so that you can continue to thrive in other aspects of that relationship. You don't need to have all of your relationships talk about all of your different things. You know what I mean? You can have a relationship serve you in one way that a different relationship doesn't serve you, if that makes sense. So boundaries really help with that and they help you continue to love people with all of your heart instead of feeling really, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I guess having anger towards them or like just being like, bitter after you've said yes to something because you didn't really want to like that's not going to help either of you so that's why it's so important to really learn to practice being honest and real with yourself and your own needs the other thing I want to remind you and it was hard for me is that boundaries are not the same things as putting up walls so I'm not saying you should put up walls with relationships like I don't want you to fully close yourself in (laughs) like I'm in a closet right now. So it's kind of ironic, but I'm not telling you to like put up all these walls to where you're not emotionally available for anyone or anything. Um, I think vulnerability is everything. And I've talked to you guys about the importance of that. But boundaries are really knowing like having a, a close enough relationship with yourself that you realize when and where you can be there for people and then be there for you. And so think of it more as like a line that like, you don't want people to cross. That doesn't mean you can't connect with them or communicate with them in a different way. Like you're still open and honest and vulnerable and real with them. That's super, super, super important when you are setting your boundaries, but you're not setting up a wall and just being cold and and not communicating at all. That communication is super important when it comes to setting your boundaries. And here's the thing. You can set your boundaries You can set your non-negotiables. You can start to say no. And a lot of times people will still ignore you, especially family. Work people, it's hit or miss. Sometimes they will because they're not respecting you. And sometimes the family thing, it's not out of disrespect as much as it is about like them thinking that they don't, that doesn't count for them because they're family, right? Like they're allowed to cross those lines and, and that's not true. They don't have a right to cross the boundaries just like you don't have a right to cross theirs. So let's say that you set some boundaries for your family. I totally get this. I can relate. But let's just, again, going back to the holidays, if there's certain things that you know you need to have boundaries for or that you really don't want them to address you about, like, hey, quit asking me when I'm going to get married. Quit asking me about my freaking weight. Like all of this BS stuff that you don't need to justify, <laughs> like set those boundaries now because holidays are coming up. But let's say they ignore them anyways. And that can be really hard because you feel like you've done everything you can to 
draw that line in the sand and to be really open and honest. And like I said, it's vulnerable sharing those boundaries opposed to just being passive. So the vulnerability of it can be hard because you're like, why don't they hear me? Why don't they see me? Like I have tried everything for them to hear that I I need this boundary in my life. And so here's what I really recommend doing. I've had clients ask me about this because I'd focus on boundaries as a part of my coaching program and I help them with figuring out what those boundaries are and setting them and then the com- communication aspect of it. So what if people ignore your boundaries? What if they choose to ignore your boundaries? So again, it depends on the relationship, but in in my eyes, you need to be honest with them, 100% honest with them. Like I know it's different when it's like a work relationship versus a family relationship, but I truly believe that there's a way to communicate and be honest with them no matter what that relationship is. So be real with them. And yes, you might have told them once before, but maybe you need to be honest with them again and and express that they have crossed that boundary because who knows why, but they didn't, they didn't hear you or listen or heed to those wishes. So remind them why you set those boundaries so remind them the why and that's a loving thing like necessary like you don't necessarily need to remind or justify but if you do want to in a loving way reset those boundaries and get them to abide by them then this is what I recommend so remind them why you set those boundaries and then release so remind and release so what I mean by release is release the outcome of what they do once you've been honest with them so like I said you can control your actions your words but you can't control the reaction of other people right you don't have control of how they react to your wishes when you're asking about those boundaries but if you release the outcome it is going to feel a whole lot better instead of trying to worry about the outcome or feel like you have to somehow control it more or control a ticking time bomb, basically, just release it. So the the remind and release method is something that I really recommend when you are having people that don't respect those boundaries. And that's a really way good way to set those boundaries in stone and keep them so that like even when someone's trying to push them back because what happens is you're going to draw this line and people are going to try and cross it or push it closer and, and make it less of one for them and you have to continue to dig that line into where it is set in stone and it is not moving and that they understand that and sometimes it takes a little bit more time for others and it sucks but you need to understand that and if it comes to a a point of where you have reminded and released it you might have to release that relationship for a a time and that's okay and you don't have to be bffs with everyone and as long as you're following what you need and serving that highest self you're not going to be wrong you're not going to make the wrong choice so just trust yourself in that way and make sure you've spent that time really figuring it out what it is you need when you are setting those boundaries um, like I said the routines and rituals with your life are huge for really getting closer to your best self and it's something that I work on with my clients and it's something that I really want you to work on as well a lot of different programs or strategies don't really focus on real life circumstances and (laughs) boundaries are real so when it comes to reaching your goals a lot of times you someone might tell you like oh just work out more or oh just eat this or eat that and the thing is is like yeah you might want to do that but the boundaries haven't been set in your life and with your relationships and in your environment to where you're able to really reach those goals so if you feel like you're constantly starting a new lifestyle or starting like to reach your goals or really like make changes but then constantly being getting pushed back from your environment or your relationships or work whatever like it's probably not the actions it's probably not the program itself or the the healthy changes that you want to make it's probably the boundaries that aren't being set or not being like a standard of non-negotiable because if you're allowing every time you like want to go work out if you're allowing that to constantly get pushed back by someone else then it's time for you to take control and set those boundaries and the thing is if you don't set those boundaries you're going to quit it's why you quit it's because you're creating this standards like these are the changes I want to make but then you're not actually putting action and setting up boundaries for those to be a reality your environment is 
a huge part of your success. And if you have not created that environment through boundaries and through communication, then it's going to feel like you're constantly failing. And I don't want that for you because I know the feeling of having these intentions for your life and always feeling like you're falling short. And it, it's hard. For so long, I was putting myself down, but in reality, I needed to bring myself up, build myself up and realize like I have a right to have a voice and an opinion and speak out to what I need because it's going like I was so afraid that it was going to step on other people's toes and hurt people's feelings. But when I actually did it and was like very, very vocal about what I needed, um, the boundaries that I need, the relationship communication that I need, it only allowed other people to stand up and shine brighter and, and express their own needs. And so that's the beauty of it. You're not going to be stepping on other people. You're going to be lifting other people up with you. There are so many people that are pressed down by this idea that they're not allowed to speak out about their own needs. And by you speaking out about your own and putting yourself first, you are going to allow others to do the same. So do not let that idea of selfishness keep you from setting those boundaries because in no way is it selfish. I promise you, I am a full on testament to that in my own life. So if that's something that's keeping you from setting those boundaries, whether it's relationships or friendships or whatever, and you're just afraid to speak up, speak up anyways, because there's someone else out there that wants to have a voice too, and they feel like they can't. So go ahead and do it. Um, I hope this was helpful. Definitely give me some feedback on this episode. Let me know. I'll let you know at the end, you'll hear where to message me, but I do want to know just like your thoughts on boundaries, anything that's worked for you, your experience with the holidays or with work. Um, I would just love for you to share your story with me. So feel free to email me support at jagafit360.com or you can message me on Instagram. I am always in the DMs. Seriously, like I live there now. So feel free to strike up a conversation with me and let me know just some of your own experiences and This is about my boundaries and how I've set them. And I truly think they're super important. So if you haven't set them yet, now's your time. Thanks. I'll talk to you guys later. See you on the next episode. Thanks again for listening to Confidently Uncomfortable. I love being able to connect with you here and honestly, don't want it to end. So head over to my Facebook group, Body Confident Blueprint, and be sure to follow me on Insta at JagoFitLife. Also, if you're ready to get real confidently uncomfortable, Go leave this podcast a five-star review and email me the review screenshot support at jagofit360.com for a chance to win a free 30-minute fitness audit and goal-setting session. I appreciate your support. See you next time.